My name is Pesh Patel, editor at Trade Finance Global and host of Trade Finance Talks TV. Trade finance faces challenges. The accelerated digitalization of trade finance induced by the pandemic aims to reduce paper, streamline KYC and compliance, as well as, as, well as operationalize complex trade processes. But this has been a challenge for financiers and corporates, and the landscape doesn't look like it's getting any easier to navigate. So what's in stock now, and how can we chart the new platformized world of trade finance? Today, I'm joined by trade finance leader, Enno Berghard Weitzel, SVP of Strategy, Digitization and Business Development at Shawcomp, joining us from Hamburg. Enno, welcome to Trade Finance Talks TV. It's great to see you again. Thank you, and it's great for having me. So, brief introduction, and I'm sure many people know who you are, but who are you, where are you from, and what do you do? Yeah, there's a favorite book of mine from Richard David Fresh titled, Who Are You? And if yes, how many? Yeah. Um, <laughs> with that in mind, I say I'm, I'm Enno Weitzel. I'm um, today happy to be here in my role as the leading the strategy and business development of Shoko. Um, prior to that, I um, and I joined only in March this year, I spent the last eight years at Commerce Bank um, and in my last role heading the global trade finance business over there. And in my current job, I think in one word, I'm taking responsibility to build the Shocom of tomorrow. Thank you very much. And, and can you tell us a bit more about Shawcom as a company and technology provider and, and how it relates to trade finance? Well, sure. Well, Shawcom is trade finance from day one. Um, we're the global leader in providing trade finance software solution to corporates and banks globally. We serve around 250 banks with software that automizes the processing of trade and supply chain finance solutions. Um, on top, we support dozens of multinational corporates um, in efficiently managing um, their, their global trade finance business in one place. Um, we're a fintech, but a seasoned one being in the industry for some 35 years plus. And um, like Michael Schumacher, Lewis Hamilton, you, you only ever are a long term leader if you have the attitude to constantly push for the better solution right? um, and constantly embrace customer feedback. And just as one example, so to understand what I mean, the whole industry got the Swift 18 release wrong, no doubt. Um, now we learned, we learned our lesson. We changed the internal processes. And now we're super happy to have um, in November 21 delivered a fantastically smooth customer experience when it came to the Swift release 21. Um, and that's what I love about Shoka. Thank you. And, and I think that that constant evolution is so critical for a, an ever changing industry. So 250 banks, I'm sure you'll have some great insights. What really are the biggest challenges faced by those banks in trade finance today? Well, I enjoy this role now talking to trade leaders across the globe um, that are heading the, the trade finance business at the banks. And there is like five topics that, that keep on recurrently coming up in the, in the conversations that we're having. Concern number one by far is regulation. And if it doesn't come up in the discussions, um, it's just because everyone is so bored off with the regulatory framework, but still it's the number one pain point. And it's topics like Basel IV, KYCC, due diligence on, on, on parties that are not your customers, uh, KYG, so know your good, um, upcoming ESG regulation, um, or say initiatives that will likely turn into regulation. And the topic list is never ending. Um, the second biggest topic is the margin pressure. Um, there's, there's growing competition due to regulatory um, uneven, uh, unlevel playing field from, say, insurance company that do not, are, uh, do not face Basel IV. They can offer more attractive conditions. Um, the paper is causing not only pain and, and errors, but also just high cost of handling. Um, customers are demanding higher turnaround time. So, it's all around the economics of the game. Third one is fraud in itself. It's not only a cost element, um, it is a risk to the whole industry. Um, and it's the number one economic challenge um, apart from the margin itself. Um, in 2020, the Singapore cases have had a lot of impact. It tectonic shifts, just AB and AMRO to name one. Um, um, and they have the full responsibility for what they're doing. And so banks have to somehow manage the fraud in that system. 
And obviously, the fourth one is digitization in itself. We have a scattered environment with very digital islands, um, multiple access channels, and different processes that banks have to manage. Um, and there's no proposition whatsoever has yet gained the traction to evolve as the next new platform that everyone needs to join. Um, we have lacking standards in the industry from international bodies, and um, no matter which bodies they are, there's, there's no API trade finance standard out there yet. Um, and again, topics are evolving. Um, and the fifth topic is the customer's expectations are changing. We all, when we come to the office and leave the office, we our smartphone is glued to our hand. So we are um, we are shaped by the expectations that Google, Amazon, and the big techs are putting. Um, now the question is, what is trade finance answering to this? Do we have the transparency, the convenience, the simplicity, the speed that's needed, and that we as consumers are used? Um, and so this is the the, the set of challenges that um, typically come up when talking to the trade finance leaders at the banks. Thanks, Enno, and I think that's really, really important to paint that landscape as, as we enter into 2022, regulation, margin pressure, fraud, digitization, and, and that customer expectations. And, and I guess perhaps we'll talk a little bit more about that customer expectations, but from a corporate side, what are some of the biggest challenges you're seeing from, 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 from their side? Yeah, uh, so uh, next to serving the banks, we, we also have that corporate franchise, which I think is a super interesting addendum or say um, say second market that we're having. Because even though it's the same business that these um, uh, corporates are dealing with, I don't say they are in the same business, but they're dealing with the same instruments, um, the, the pain points are uh, a, a little bit different. Um, pain point number one on the corporate side is the time consuming trade finance process. It just takes ages to get an instrument up and running. I was talking to a say mid-sized um, energy trader. They have four people in their trade finance department managing 10 letters of credit per month. And it's not that these people are lazy or, or, or bad organized. It's just the industry is forcing that uh, an overly aging paper-based process upon them. It's just tedious. Um, Another corporate told me they were spending six weeks to get one guarantee applied for and actually issued. This is just, it's unbearable. And the industry, so the banks, the institutions are putting these processes upon the corporates because they simply do not have, do not have another choice. So that's number one. It's just these time constraints. Trade finance obviously related to managing the physical supply chain. So there's all the uncertainties and delays in the physical supply chains that is causing a huge pain to the corporates. Um, now that's, um, there is an angle to uh, solving that from a say digitization slash trade finance point of view, but from the corporate point, that is the number one. Sorry, the, the number two. Third one is the scattered communication channels, right? Um, say every even mid-sized corporate would easily work with three plus um, banks and financiers, some with 20 plus institutions. Um, they just do not log in to 20 different portals of um, the banks. They simply do not. So I was talking to one commodity trader, a global active one, and he's sending back and forth the communication via email deliberately choosing a relatively insecure channel of communication because not all of their banks um, will offer multi-banking standard communications um, and he will simply deny to log into those bank model portals. Uh, so the banking, the trade finance industry is not offering appropriate solutions to these corporates um, and we as say partners to the industry, we need to come up with relevant solutions to these problems. Thank you, and 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 lots of lots of I guess headwinds for for corporates, including the the added issues around um, the the restrictions on the movement of people, supply chain delays, and 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 obviously now with the new Omicron variant, you know more and more uncertainty. So how can a technology provider like SureComp help clients overcome some of these challenges? Yeah, we've, we've thought a lot about this and in my role, that's key to, to my task, right? So so what is the key question? Uh, so we know about the pain points, but the solution isn't that obvious because as I've, as I've mentioned on the banking side, there are a number of propositions out there that by looking at them, you would think 
hey, that could be a solution. But then again, we don't see the adoption that such propositions would need to turn into an actual solution. Um, so we thought, let's leverage the network that we have, both on the banking and on the corporate side, and move our solutions to be easier accessible, to be more convenient, and then be more valuable to the users. So technically, we were, we're pushing our solutions to the cloud. Um, it's this APIification around the, the um, communication and the integration. But the, the key thing is that we are lowering the barriers to actually use these solutions in terms of technically lowering the barriers. So it's the full SaaS solution that we're now offering. Um, so people can simply sign up um, and also economically, right? We're lowering the, um, the subscription fees um, to be really attractive. So you, ideally you'd have to ask the question, so why not join, right? It's, it's ridiculously attractive um, and you should have very strong reasons not to be there. Mm. And we're pushing new features as it's a SaaS, as it's cloud. Um, the speed at which features will be on these solutions is much more increased than the, the regular ones that we're used to with that autumn release that is somehow released, uh, linked to the Swift release. Um, that's old school and we're not doing it anymore. Well, clearly uh, um, maintain the existing on-prem solutions, but the focus is on um, the SaaS solutions. And that is what we think we have to do in order to do our part to enable both corporate and banks, but also the wider participants of the industry um, to actually use technology as a lever to increase the business activities on, on all ends. I mean that's very that's very humbling to uh, to to hear and 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 how does Surecomp adapt to the changing nature of this this increasingly changing regulatory landscape? So obviously the the messaging types ISO and even MLETR. Oh yeah, that's I think a, a super relevant question because it's obvious that the need for change will not go away not in 2022 and not in the future to come. Just to give you a few examples, um, we ISO 2022 is on the agenda. Uh, more and more clients are asking to update our systems and we do that, that's all good. Now, the nature behind is it will bring more structured data because we, as the participants, we want to use, we want to consume more data points. Take the ESG example. Um, with ESG, we want to come up with the tracking and information on every single transaction about who is the supplier, who is the buyer, what is the good, what is the shipping. Uh, um, so who is going to process all these data points, who is going to bring them together and how are we going to consume them. So without going into an ESG breakout, it is apparent that we need to continue up upgrading our level of data and data that we are going to provide. So there will be a new, say, ad uh, um, uh, ad adoption uh, need to be uh, in the industry. And so the question is not, when are we there? Um, but rather, how can we reduce the cost of adjustment? And that is the key question, because the next adjustment will be around the corner. MLETR will enable us to get rid of paper, hopefully, um, and UK is pressing ahead. Uh, there's a lot of uh, energy and movement over there. Hopefully Germany, Italy will come and hopefully G7 and eventually G20. And then all the participants need to be able to consume and manage and update and amend MLETR, so real digital documents. Um, so there will be endless adjustment. And for us, the key question, how can we enable all the participants to easily, conveniently adjust to a new level system um, to, to manage these new data points, which in the end will be. Thank you. And I guess fraud prevention is also, as you mentioned earlier, a really important area of focus for, for Surecomp. And, and I'm sure we, we, we will see continued challenges in, in, in 2022. How can Surecomp help clients ensure that their security is protected despite some of these new threats that have emerged growing off the back of digitalization? Yeah, um, very fair question. As I mentioned earlier, when, when talking to the trade finance heads at the bank, fraud is on the agenda with everyone who has who is running a decent trade finance business. Um, and say the double invoice fraud um, in, in um, uh, 2020 
um, has gotten a lot of negative attention though. Um, and also there, some propositions are out in the market. And I say propositions because they're not solutions yet. Again, lacking adoption is the key element. But then when you step back, right, the fraud protection and prevention should be a commodity that, again, is easily accept, uh, accessible for every participant, whether you have one transaction that you want to check the financing status of the invoice, or whether you're running a full portfolio with the book that is in trillions, uh, it, it should just be there. It should be available, accessible, everyone should use it, and it should literally be free of charge. Why? Because it's, it's like a public good, right? Without that, and, and the fraudsters are telling, are educating us, without this solution available, um, this is a real threat to the whole business. And therefore, every participant should have an interest in having such solution available. Now, again, propositions out there, not solutions yet, because there's missing adoption. And again, I think with our footprint in the market, with our um, client franchise that we are enjoying, um, we are in a position to do both, right? For us, this such a, a proposition would just be one adjacent solution that we bring out to the market. Um, we have a relevant franchise by which we can bring critical mass from day one. And so um, I, I can't tell the full story right now, but um, stay tuned for a solution that will be out there soon um, and um, will turn into a real solution to that problem. Thanks, Anu. I'm really, really looking forward to hearing more about that fraud solution. So 10 months into your new role and, and as we enter into 2022, what are your priorities moving forward and what do you want to achieve from this new year? Yeah, well, that's a good question, though. Um, number one is client focus, right? Um, since since joining Showcom, um, I have talked to so many clients, super interesting conversations, super insightful. Um, that will be the guiding thought for 2022 to come. Um, the clients, um, we've overcome Swift Release 21, uh, which was a major say, uh, blocker um, in terms of focusing on their co uh, customers' business, right? So the banks are not on their own, but they want to compete. They want to bring services and solutions to their customers. So that will mark 2022, um, that banks are again focusing on bringing new features, new functionality to improve the business that they can offer to their customers. Hence, this will be our focus in 2022. Um, and the other big element is collaboration. Um, we have seen that um, in the past that whenever solutions are successful, they build on collaboration, right? It's not no one single out there will solve any of the trade finance problems. Um, and again, we at Showcom, um, and I enjoy that situation a lot, we have customers on the corporate side, we have customers on the banking side, we, have, we serve small, we serve mid-size, we serve the global leading parties, and that brings a variety of input, a variety of insights, um, and enables us to, to bring solutions, building on collaboration that can actually solve the problem. And when I come back to the question that you had on what are the pain points on both corporates and banks, the one point connecting it is the cumbersomeness in the trade finance process itself. So take the paper that is necessary to come up with a guarantee. Hence, guarantee will be on the agenda for us to come up with a collaborative solution that will make the whole guarantee process a lot more easy. Um, and we're focusing on this, say, in the first half next year. Thank you, Anno, and, and, and I guess I'd, I'd definitely reiterate those cumbersome paper-based processes and how are we going to overcome some of those challenges which are linked with a whole raft of problems from, from fraud, money laundering, ESG, et cetera, et cetera. So Anno, we look forward to hearing more from you in 2022. Happy New Year and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.